The Nigerian presidency has confirmed an imminent cabinet reshuffle, though no specific timeline has been given. Presidential advisor Bayo Ononuga discussed this plan during a briefing at the State House, but notes that it remains unclear uh, when the president, Bola Tinibu, will make changes. Tinibu appointed his ministers in August last year and urged them to promote his administration's progress actively. Ononuga said many Nigerians are unaware of the government's achievements as some ministers have been reluctant to speak publicly, uh, media shy, as they called it. Uh, so, cabinet is off. Let me tell you, I don't have any timeline. The president has uh, expressed his desire to reshuffle his cabinet, and he will do it. I don't know whether he wants to do it before October 1, but he will surely do it. Uh, so that's what I will say. He has not given us any timeline when he wants to do it, but he will do it. He has expressed his plan. He wants to do it. He wants to reshuffle. All right, we're now being joined by Arise News Analyst, Dr. Constance Ikuku. Good morning, and thanks for being here with us. A very good morning to you, Nkechi, <laughs> and good morning, D, as well. Good morning to you. All uh, right, Constance. cabinet reshuffle. We've been on this topic for a long time. Finally, the presidency is saying, look, we're going to do it. We just don't have a timeline yet. Now, talking about what uh, Bayo Ananuga said there about... Um, the performances of some ministries and Nigerians not knowing those performances because they are media shy. What are some of the metrics you, you see the president using to reshuffle his cabinet or remove some ministers? Do you think uh, media shy in communicating their accomplishments is one of them? Well, Nkechi, uh, you're very correct when you said that there have been talks of uh, possible cabinet reshuffle for some months. Now it seems that it's fast approaching, although in that short report, presidential spokesman Bayon Nanaga says there's no specific timeline. However, the, ver the president is very much interested in doing so. Uh, so it's more likely now. I, I think it's, it's, it's good to begin with the fact that what all this hue and cry indicates is that politics underpins everything that we do. We've been talking about it every day. We talk about it. Politics is central to the quest to unlock the country, as we can see. Uh, you know, and so what it means is that if it's done right, the gains can be immeasurable. But when it's done wrong, the results are catastrophic. What we are hearing is that um, there's intense lobbying already by ministers to either retain their position or at least be given a chance in the new cabinet. And that's where the, performan com uh, the performance comes in. Uh, Bayonanaga says that the rejig will be based on what you've done so far, seeing that the government has a central coordination unit that has been monitoring the accomplishments of each minister. Then the metrics, I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter whether you speak about it or not. I think they will look at the scorecard and the record that they have in order to do this. The expectation will be that the president has the will to inject a new energy and fresh perspectives in his cabinet in order to gain that momentum that he needs, as well as change the current trajectory. Because what we've seen before is that uh, petty bourgeoisie elements you know, hold the country down and represent themselves instead of the people. Whether we're able to shake that off, whether the president is able to shake that off based on whatever metrics um, he uses is yet to be seen. Well, Hadiza Osman, a former boss of the MPA, uh, is the one given that task of, uh, I think, uh, uh, coordination, you know, to evaluate uh, the performance of the ministers. But then there is a, a, a snag there where I was reading that they might depend on what people are saying. Now, it could be dangerous because you may not see what someone is doing because they don't talk or so to say, but they are working assiduously. But one hopes that uh, the, the, the Hadiz, Hadiz Usman did her work effectively, effectively and efficiently and then based on that. But what do you think? Uh, changing ministers or really reducing the bloated government? Well, it's both. Um, whether you're reducing or changing ministers, what people are looking for is quality 
and result. Uh, mind you that the president is his own man. That's another angle to look at in this story. The president is his own man, at least. Um, he is part and parcel of the uh, All Progressive Congress. He is part of the formation of that party. He has paid his dues. So locally, he's not answerable to any for, uh, uh, godfather. Uh, internationally, that's another uh, kettle of fish. But locally, at least, he has all the powers he needs in order to either change the cabinet, in order to make sure that we have a great results in the country. If he's unable to do that within this couple of years that he has been given the opportunity to do, it will be tragic for his government. I think the expectation is that, yes, he is seen as someone that knows how to play politics. Then that politics should amount to astronomical good for the society. If it doesn't, then what's the point? Should it be playing politics with, <laughs> with people's <laughs> lives? Exactly, yeah, I mean, exactly. Uh, because what we see often is that politicians are just merely playing politics, which is dangerous for the country because you do not uh, look at how or count how that impacts society. Uh, things continue to degenerate. You do not want to see that. The president has all the powers he needs today to make that change. Will he make that change? The ball is in his court. He has the call to make. And we'll have you right back here to discuss this when he uh, or if he eventually makes those changes. Thank you so much. Dr.